<coughs> Welcome to a video presentation of a section covering multiplying matrices. Now, as I pointed out yesterday very strongly, multiplying matrices is not anything like adding and subtracting matrices. It's much more difficult. All right, so that's what we need to work on today, just multiplying. As you can see on the left side of the board, I've got the rules for multiplying matrices. All right. First of all, rules. Inner dimensions must agree. So you're going to write the dimensions of the two matrices you're multiplying. The inside numbers have to be the same. If they're not, we can't even multiply it, and it's automatically a no solution. The solution matrix has the size of the outer dimensions. Remember, the solution matrix is the matrix where we put our answers. Again, the solution matrix has the size of the outer dimensions. Multiplying matrices is not commutative. Remember, we've talked about commutative many times this year. Commutative means it's the same forwards or backwards. That's not true. You know, like if I was doing two times three and then I flipped it around and did three times two, I'd get the same answer. With matrices, that doesn't work. And we don't, don't, we do not multiply elements in the same relative position. That's what we don't do. OK. You can see the next thing I have up here at the top is kind of a general procedure thing. I'm not going to talk too much about that, because that probably looks mostly like Greek to most of you anyway. And if we waste time on that, that's that much less I can spend helping you with homework today. So let's just go ahead and move on to the first example, All right, which is what you got down there. 3, 2, 1, 6 times 1, negative 2, 4, 3. Again, the first thing we have to do is list the dimensions. You know how to do that part. We did that yesterday. Remember, the dimensions are the number of rows it has, remember rows go across, times the number of columns it has. Those are the ones that go up and down. So this matrix has two rows and two columns. And obviously, this one does too. Nothing new yet. All right, we have to look at two rules now. The first rule was that the inner dimensions have to agree. So I'm talking about these two numbers on the inside. As you can see very clearly, they do agree. When I say they agree, I mean they're the same. Okay? They're both two. If one was seven and one was three, it's automatically no solution, problem done, move on to the next one. Okay, but they're the same, so I've got to keep going. The outside numbers, 2 and the 2, tell me the size of where my answers are going to be. So where my answers are going to be is going to have two rows and two columns of its own. Okay. And I always set up the solution matrix. You should, too. Always set up the solution matrix before you start. You're going to have to to help you figure out what you're actually going to do. All right. Now, what you got to do is you got to look at the solution matrix and look at the spots. That tells you what you actually multiply. Okay. So, for instance, this spot here where I'm going to put my answers is row one, column one. That tells me that I'm going to multiply row 1 from the first matrix and column 1 from the second matrix. Okay. Again, I'm going to multiply row 1 from the first matrix 
and column one from the second matrix. Okay. Now, you just go through the numbers in order. Okay. So, for instance, the first number here is three, the first number there is one. So I multiply three and one together. And three times one, well that's obviously three. Okay. Then the next numbers I would run into would be 2 and 4. I multiply those two together, and 2 and 4 make 8. Now, this is, this is the part that really screws people up. After we multiply, we don't actually multiply those two numbers together. We're going to end up adding those together. Yes, I said that right. We end up adding those together. Okay. Jackson. Multiply two and four. Yeah, where do you? Yes, two and four. Where, why would we do that? Yeah. We did row one with column one. So I did three with one, and then I did two with four. Because that's what's in row one here and column one here. So you multiply rows and columns? Yes. That is okay. Okay, let's go to the next spot. Let's try it again. Okay, this here is row one, column two. So this time I'm going to multiply what's in row one with what's in column two over here. So I'm going to do three times negative two, which is negative six. And then the column goes here, so two and three. Well, two times three is six. Okay, got that one. All right, so now I can jump down to the bottom here. This spot here is row two, column one. So I'm going to multiply row two with column one. So row two, column one. One times one, that's one. Six times four, that's 24. All right, and the last one here, this spot, is row two, column two. So I'm going to multiply what's in row two with what's in column two. So I've got one times negative two, which is negative two. And six times three, which is 18.